Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there is John Lewandowski. How you doing? Good. Tired, but good. I know. It's been a long day. Tomorrow will be even longer. Yep. But nonetheless, um, I don't think we're as tired as a certain netminder. <laughs> right. But we'll get into that in a minute. Before I get into that, one uh, one lovely part of our show is Hockey Locker. Thank them for all four years of their sponsorship of us. Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. So today the Preds took on the Carolina Hurricanes. The Carolina Hurricanes currently sit at the top of their division with uh, – was it uh they're eight and they were nine and one in their last ten going into this game. So they've been playing fairly well. Uh, this team is just offensively stacked. Yeah. Um, and could cause nightmares for your defense. But um, I'll turn it over to my co-host here. All right, so shots on goal in the first period, Carolina outshot Nashville 18 to 7. In the second period, Carolina outshot Nashville 21 to 7. In the third period, Carolina outshot Nashville 28 to 11. And in total, Carolina outshot Nashville 67 to 25. Now, face-off percentage. The Hurricanes were better at 59% to the Predators' 41%. The Predators went one for three on the power play. The Hurricanes went one for four. Predators had 10 penalty minutes. The Hurricanes, eight penalty minutes. I'd Both- like to add in something yeah. that the Preds in the last five games have a power play goal. Nice. Yep. You can get it. <laughs> All right, so... Each team has 18 hits. The Predators had 21 blocks. The Hurricanes, 15 giveaways. The Hurricanes had 12. The Predators had five. All right. Um, When we talk about um, shots, these, some of these were really good. And some of them... (sighs) We're really bad as right. far as coverage on that. You know, like some of the shots were just fling it at the net, hope for the best as far as, you know, Carolina's concerned. Um, you know, and, and to look at it from that perspective, um um you know that that's kind of one of those situations um you know one of the one of the big things here Um, and, and I, I better say that's the big thing right now. I, I mean, that me and John are going to be looking at is I know Lincoln and starting tomorrow. <laughs> right. Uh, Juice was in that. Uh, congratulations to Juice, by the way, um, on being named to the All Star team. Uh, tip of the cap there. It's well yep. deserved. Um, yet another notch there for him. Um, you know, uh, second pred or third Predators goaltender to make the All Star game. It was Volkud, Pekka, and now UC Saros. Um, I know that the news broke this morning that the Preds are shopping at home. I'm not going to get into that because I don't do the rumor mill. I just know that the news broke from Poyle himself that he's not opposed to shopping him. As well as Fabro, um, I I don't know where I sit on it. 
the return is what matters in these. Um, I will say this. I think Ekholm's getting a little on the old side of... I, I got to check his age here, but um, I, I, I don't believe... I believe 34, 35. He's 32, so um, he will be 33 in May. So... Um, you know, I, I just think that we've got six million dollars tied up in him. Uh, the hall back better be good. He's got term and length, relatively healthy player. Um, has all as averaging a plus 106 in his career. Um, to have a plus in your career as a defenseman, big part having 236 points in 698 NHL games, big part. He's you know, there's a lot that goes on for him. So there's a lot of pieces there to, to be built. Um, scoring in the first was Paul Stetsney with his second of the season with an assist from Pesci, his 11th, and Timo Teravine in his 12th. That was at the 741 mark. That goal was scored on the power play. Philip Forsberg then scores at the 10-29 mark on the power play, his 15th of the season with assist from Parson in his 7th, and Yossi his 22nd. Then the second period at the 35-second mark, Brady Shea scores his 7th of the year, assisted by Pesci, his 12th, and Nakas his 21st. Then at the 247 mark, Matthias Ekholm scores his 4th of the year, Assisted by Parson in his eighth. Then at the 9.54 mark, Jordan Stahl scores his 11th. Assisted by Fast, his 10th, and Mark Nook, his 11th. Then at the 11.55 mark, Cody Glass scores his fourth. Assisted by Granlin, his 21st, and Carey, his third. All righty. Uh... Then scoring in the third at the 506 mark was Mark Jankowski, his fourth, with an assist from Joe Hansen, his tenth, and Matt Duchesne, his 18th. Then scoring at the 1957 mark, which left 30 seconds on the clock, was Colton Sissons off of a turnover with an empty net. Uh, uh, in net for the Carolina Hurricanes was Petar Kochekov. He stopped 24 of tw uh, 20 of 24 with an 8.833 save percentage. And that for the Predators was used to sorrows with 64 saves and 67 shots. He is now tied third all time in saves in a single game. That is impressive. Um, yo, know, one of the stats that takes everything out, okay? So the Preds, so Carolina had 12 turnovers. Yeah. The Preds only had seven takeaways. That means that five of those giveaways that Carolina had, or they had 12 giveaways and 12 takeaways. Okay, that is not something that you exactly want to see when when something like that is, you know, coming down on you. When, when you are turning the puck over and giving the puck away, Seven more times than the other team, and I, and I talk about this, you know, um, in, in a perspective of, you know, I I'm unbiased, but this is this is not that's this is not Carolina's strong suit. When they yeah. turn the puck over defensively, they get themselves caught in a jam at times. They do, and 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 this is something not exactly that you want to be seeing from, um. Your your offense or your defense for that matter, because defensive giveaways hurt more. 
Um, you know, and and this is just something where 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 you sit and you gotta hope that it gets better. Um, you know, the the one interesting part for me when I sit back and look at this a little bit. Oh, by the way, the attendance at the uh game was eighteen thousand three hundred and forty four. Their capacity is eighteen thousand six hundred and eighty for the building. And Raleigh, North Carolina. So what a crowd. And and I mean this too, because I think when we when we sit back and talk about what Saros did, it, it may take me a couple days to even like put a full grasp on what just happened. Right, because right. I'm sitting there going, get the fuck out of the zone, get the fuck out of the zone, please get the fuck away. No, no, stop. They're, they're, they're just peppering the net and peppering the net and peppering the net. It's like you're going for an objective in NHL 2023 child just so you can get free coins. <laughs> because you're just peppering the net for no reason and you're not, you know, quality over quantity. All right. And that was proven here today with the Preds, quality over quantity. And, and you know, I'm not going to give any credit to Nashville's coach because I don't like him. I'm not going to shy away from it and say that I don't, that I like him. I'm saying this team is a very good team. It will surprise some that I sit here and I'm not going to give him credit. I'm not. This team gelled it, bonded, and they play, they're playing well right now. All right. But they should not have they, this season. They should not be having to dig themselves out of this hole if they've been capable of doing this the entire time. That right. means you have guys on your roster that you shouldn't have, and you picked the wrong lineups. If you're clicking, if you're playing well now, and you're not playing, you know, and that's the thing. Like Fabro's been out of lineup, Smith's been out of lineup, and they're winning. You know, and, and that's the thing. Like if if. You know, Smith comes back and they send us Novak back. I'm going to have to just go, what's wrong with you? Novak has almost the same amount of points that Smith had all season. Now, they're two totally different types of players. One's a grit and finesse player. The other one's a hockey IQ player. So I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and say that what Smith brings to the game isn't needed. It is. Right. He's the guy who will get into the corners and battle for the puck. You know, um, I, I believe that Tanner Jadot is snake bitten and he just needs to get the monkey off of his back. It will come, I, I hope. But, you know, I think that he's got more than that in him. He's still playing his game. He's still getting the chances. He's he's starting to pick up. Just, you know, he's got to play his game. And, and he got bumped off that a little bit by them ripping out apart the herd line and putting – Sissons with Parsonen and and Forsberg, but that's been that line has been humming. So I mean right. that that line's full speed ahead. So I'm I'm not complaining. This is the one spot where if you change the lines now, I'm gonna have to hit you upside the head because they're buzzing. And if you change the lines now because you're scared of what Washington's capable of, then you're scared to play your game. This is where don't let other teams bump you off your game. Right. And that goes for coaching as well. It's not just the players. The coach can't go, oh, well, five minutes into the game, this isn't working. You're with him, you're with him, you're with him. It, no. Just no. You know, that's just, that's how I feel. Because about five minutes into the game, you're seeing every forward line on the ice. Because average shift time is anywhere from a minute to two, a minute and a half. So you're you're either seeing every line or you're about to see the fourth or fifth or the fourth line. And right. defensively, you've seen at least two lines. <clears throat> so I mean, and that's the thing. Like they got bumped off their game quite frequently. And and I don't think that that's a positive for them. Here's the thing when you're shopping guys like Akob and Fabro, here's my thing with Fabro. Fabro needs to go to a team who's young and has, has and plays with grit, but he also has to go to a team with a coach that's willing to teach him how to play the physical part of the game because he lacks that in a major way. He's more worried about playing the puck than he is playing his position. Right. 
which has caused him to score own goals, which has caused him to be out of position several times. It's just, you know, that's, I just don't see that with him. I think he just needs better. Maybe he's not a fit for the system. But when you're talking about a guy like Ekholm, the you're, I would be asking the King's Ransom because the King's Ransom is this guy has been consistent from day one, has never stepped off. He is a locker right. room leader. And and you have term. And it's not and it's not like you're overpaying him. It's six point four million. That's not overpaying for Echo. That's spot on where Echo should be. So uh, that's like a team deal in some ways, because it's spot on. It's not like the the Forsberg or the Yossi contracts where they're nine million dollars, but they haven't done enough outside of Yossi. You have a Forsberg has it done enough, at least in my opinion. Now, I don't care who, how many people love Forsberg. I love Forsberg. But he has not done enough to show me he's worth $9 million. He's not a 40-goal scorer. He's not a 60-point scorer. He's, you know, he hasn't been consistent his whole career. So I want to see you show me something that shows me why they gave you this. And, 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 and don't do it. As the year flips over, you have to be consistent. And I know it's hard to be consistent on a team that's inconsistent. But, you know, I think that no matter what happens going forward, I think Nashville is in a good position. All right, your referees of this game were Gord Dwyer and Corey Savet. Uh, linesmen were Jonathan Fournier and Killian McNamara. Why do I feel like I hear that name in every league? I said I feel like I've said that in the E, the A, and the N. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Carolina is Rod Prendemore. Scratches for Nashville were Cole Smith, Michael McCarron, and Dante Fabro. Uh, scratches for Carolina were Dylan Cogler and Stefan Dosen. Dosen's aid today with an injury. Three stars of the game, Paul Stasty with a goal. And Brett Pesci with two assists. Ah, uh, those are homer picks. Because personally, um, Parsonen should be there instead of Stasny with two assists. If you're picking the guys with two assists. If you're going by stat line, that was, that was a homer pick. However, if you say UC Soros was the first star of that game with four, with 64 saves, I don't think I've seen a performance like that in my lifetime. Also, congratulations to setting the franchise record. I think that John's going to get sick of you making UC Soros graphics. He's got to now go make a franchise record and an all. <laughs> but you know what? Those are good days. Those are good graphics. Those are the fun ones. It's the the ones that hurt when we have to do the 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 sad ones. And speaking of sad, um, I know that everyone was over the last since Monday has been talking about Demar Hamlin. Um, from what I know, he's awake, he's writing, he can't talk because of the breathing tube, but he is awake, he is trying to communicate, um, from what I read from Adam Schefter, who's ESPN football, or is a football reporter, um, said that he asked who won the game in writing, and they told the doctors, and, and, and this is what I'm going to say, um, and, and, and I want you to hear this, because this is, this is not something that's just football related this is this is human this is life when when you you're an athlete and, and something like this happens to you and the first thing you think of is who won the game i want that guy on my team i want that guy on my team what the doctors did in response um almost made me cry as as a, a grown man because it was perfect they told him he won the game of his life and then was informed that the game was canceled and they will not complete it this week or at all. 
it's just canceled. Both teams have to move on to the next game. Which is why the schedule is not being moved. Buffalo has, there's no talk if Buffalo is even going to play this weekend. I don't know if they're going to be able to. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of players who are not going to sit there and be able to play without that up here. All right. And and, and, and here's the thing. Um, normally, I don't add these to the show, but I have one big thing. And I'm not going to say it. All I'm going to do is one gesture. And I know this has nothing to do with them. But one member of the Vegas Golden Knights who spent a lot of his career in Buffalo. Because if you, everyone in the league that is stars in the NHL is talking and you say nothing, especially when you wrote this long letter about how much you love the fans in the city of Buffalo, but then this horrible thing happens to an athlete in Buffalo and you say nothing, screw you. Because that is disrespectful. You have forgotten what who put you in that position to be able to play in this league. They could have never traded him. That is true, right? He could have they could have just said, no, you're gonna do what we tell you, and you know. But this is not a situation where you're gonna play mums the word. This is a human being. He has a family, he has friends, he had it has an entire nation that cares about him right now. And one person won't say anything. The people that are silent, I, I I feel like in these moments are the villains, are the ones that are up that that don't feel like it's like they're above it. You get what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it. I think they feel like that'll never happen to them. But in a situation where <laughs> Eichel's been in this situation, where something threatened his career. So if anybody should have sympathy, Chris Letang came out and said something. They're right. Buffalo Sabres at Buffalo and Pittsburgh are rivals. They don't like each other. Much like Toronto came out, the Leafs, all of them wore, uh, uh, wore love number three shirts, much like Buffalo did. They got them from Buffalo. And they're bitter rivals. They're, I mean, you could spit in Buffalo and <laughs> it'll hit Toronto. I mean, it's that close. I've been there. I've stood on the border. I just, you know, and, and this is where I sit here. And, and I know this is a Nashville podcast. And I know this is a Dabros podcast. And I know it's a hockey podcast. But when I sit back and I really look at it, what really irks me is the amount of little press that people are giving the guy who gave the hit and how bad he feels and how much he's tearing himself up. So to you, sir, you also get my prayers. You get my thoughts because I could not imagine living with that thought on my conscience. And kudos to the medical staff, the Bengals fans yet again, you guys, the, the 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 wife of the coach of the Bengals who got who organized the schools of Cincinnati to send cards to him. Kudos to the city of Cincinnati. You guys rock. And I tip my cap to you guys because that is awesome. I love these stories in sports, but I hate the, the, that these happen. These things right. do happen. I hate that they happen. But when they happen, you see the good in humanity. And that... That is that is peacefulness. And guess what? I, we've seen it in Nashville. We've seen it here. We've seen it uh, amongst our leagues. We've seen it everywhere. I remember watching the Cup in the 90s when uh, the player for the Red Wings who was in the accident and couldn't walk anymore and never got to play again. You know, I, I, I remember all these stories, you know, Ray Bork going his whole career without winning a championship. The feel-good stories of things that, you know, and here's the thing. I have one message for Jamar Hamlin, and it's me personally to him. I want you to be the next sports feel-good story. I want you to be good. I want you to be healthy. And I want you to play again because nothing would make this a happier moment and make everything right than you playing again. 
I, if you're the team player that you, that you know you asked, did we win? That tells me you're not done. That tells me you're not done playing yet. So then do what you need to do. Do your best because you, you 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 know that that's I mean John I mean you know how it is we've all had our injuries, our yeah. surgeries. You know, I mean, we've seen some pretty bad stuff in hockey before. Some very scary injuries. Right. Okay. Um, but all that to be said, well, it's as a pre this is about as much of a Nashville joke as it can be. It was a banner night for the predator. <laughs> <laughs> Since you all like cracking jokes about our banners. If I ever see a Leafs fan crack a joke about banners, I might actually, like, that. those are fighting words. Y'all got more banners in your rafters than we do. And they're current. Um, anyway, uh, we will be back tomorrow with the Predators and the Washington Capitals. And the Milwaukee Admirals against the San Diego Gulls. It is hat night for the Admirals. Come get your winter hats. Tickets are still available. You can call the Milwaukee Admirals at 414-227-0550. Or visit Ticketmaster.com and type in Milwaukee Admirals. Nashville Predators are in Washington. If you're a Preds fan and you're in that area, go on Ticketmaster, uh, Seat Geek, any of those. Call watch, call the Capitals for anything. Go check out a game. Hockey is probably the most fun game you'll ever have. You may not be a fan, but see it in person. And man, I'll tell you, we, me and John in, enjoy this. It's part of who we are. We keep yeah. saying we're going to not come back and then. <laughs> they keep reeling us back in you know and, and that's the good thing about hockey it just always it feels good to be a fan it's probably one of the best emotional games like best emotion games I can ever you have to have your emotions in check to be playing hockey let alone be a fan because some of those fan bases are pretty brutal um, we're not exactly we're not saying that we're brutal but I mean like I get it Carolina and Nashville, we're very, very similar in how our fan bases react. I, I will say that because our fan bases need to do that. Now, Preds fans, we won again. Stop crying. Thank you. <laughs>